Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here in Utah, Tennessee. We are blessed that you are here in this space with us. We are blessed that you are joining us virtually, whether in real time or later. If you are joining us virtually, we invite you to download our full text booklet that contains all our hymns, all our scripture readings, as well as all our prayers at sfaec.org. And we invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, hymn 334, Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, that is the song of praise. We're not singing that to start. The opening hymn is H524, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am the potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 139. We will say it responsibly by whole verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press on me behind and before, and lay your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you, while I was being made in secret, and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How I see my mind. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. A reading from the letter of Paul to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love. 
because of the hearts of the saints, have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty. Yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might, have, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will ridicule him and say, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is Labor Day weekend. Some of you may be off work tomorrow, and for those very fortunate of you that don't have to go to work because you're retired, well, you're luckier than most of us. So the first Labor Day holiday was celebrated on a Tuesday in September of 1882 in New York City, and it was in accordance with the plans of the Central Labor Union. And then they held their second Labor Day celebration just a year later. And by 1894, 23 more states had adopted the holiday. President Grover Cleveland signed a law making the first Monday in September of each year a national holiday. And there was a strike, Eugene versus Debs, um, and it was organized as the Pullman strike in 1894, and it was a nationwide protest that resulted in federal labor laws to protect very underrepresented workers and their working conditions. And that strike brought the economy to a standstill. And it spurred President Cleveland to make the decision to make Labor Day a national holiday. Now, our scripture readings today have much to say about the topics of labor and cost. The story that we read from the prophet Jeremiah talks about the image of God as a potter working with a piece of clay. And Jeremiah talks about the labor involved for the potter and also the cost of his work. God is portrayed as a potter who is certainly willing to labor over the clay and then consider the cost of keeping it or the result of discarding it. The late Reverend Dr. Susanna Metz has strong connections to the Diocese of East Tennessee. And she was a well-known priest here in our diocese. And then she moved 
to England near the end of her career to be a vicar at a small country parish in England. And she also has an interesting connection to our church in that a chasuble that once belonged to her, you will sometimes see Lou presiding at the Eucharist wearing that chasuble. So Dr. Metz had something to say about this passage from Jeremiah. She said, smooth, cold clay dug from the very skin of the earth is thrown on the wheel. Thrown seems a harsh word. Where did the term come from? But we've all heard folks say, I'm going to throw a pot. Oh dear, you better duck. <laughs> but I've only seen potters place the still wet clump of clay carefully in the center of the wheel and then contemplate it for a while. Where to start, they might be thinking. Or maybe when to start. You start only when the muse begins to guide the hands. The will begins to spin and hands cradle the cold lump, smoothing its sides, holding it as gently as a mother holds a newborn baby's head. Thumbs begin to press in to form the inside and build the sides, always touching, forming, creating, the eyes watching, loving the growth, the beauty, and the uniqueness that's happening before the artist's eyes. But then, a side bulges. Perhaps a crack appears, or perhaps a hand slips. The wheel slows to a stop. The artist considers, can it be fixed, or must I start again? Decision made. The wheel spins again. The same lump of clay is reformed, renewed, recreated into something beautiful. The artist does not throw out the clay. Hear that again. The artist does not throw out the clay. If human artists care so much for their smooth, cold clay, care that it's becoming something beautiful. How much more does God care for the clay of each of us dug from the very skin of the earth? Yes, God does sound pretty grim in this passage of Jeremiah. There will be a good bit of reforming, renewing, recreating, needed for people to be reconciled with their God, but it will happen. God will not toss the clay from the wheel. God's hands will cradle the people of Israel as a mother cradles the head of her newborn. God will warn, God will chastise, and will fix the cracks. Reconciliation, it may be painful, but the clay will not be thrown away. Once again, the wheel will spin, and the clay may look forward to and not fear the strengthening by fire. In Psalm 139, we again see God as a creative force shaping our very being. I invite you to open your bulletins and look again with me at Psalm 139, 13. It proclaims, I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. 
Returning to our theme of labor and cost, we read Paul's letter to Philemon concerning Onesimus, the slave. I found it a little ironic that the direct translation of Onesimus is useful, yet if you go back to the passage that we read, it claims that he was not useful at one point. So he was a slave who had ran away to find Paul, and Paul was in prison at the time, and Onesimus had become like a child to Paul, and he was advocating for him to be spared from any repercussions from his escape. I, in preparing for this sermon, I ran across a little tidbit that I had never thought about, which said, Paul was technically a criminal because he was in prison. And so if Paul was in the Episcopal Church today, he likely would not be able to be ordained because, as you may or may not know, Episcopal clergy are subject to several background checks and a number of screenings and things of that nature. So to think that St. Paul may not have been allowed to be clergy is kind of an interesting thought. So labor and cost are ideas that exist throughout scripture, and they continue to exist throughout our lives today as we make careful or haphazard decisions about where we will place our own labor and at what cost. The gospel reading today, something else, am I right? Is a shocking statement on the labor and cost of discipleship. Hate our father, hate our mother, hate our children. For what labor and at what cost? As we consider these things in the context of our own time and with Labor Day approaching tomorrow, we should think about what labor we are called to and what cost might be involved for us and for others. What labor has God called you to and has the anticipated cost prevented you from moving forward? We should also be reminded of all those who have fought for the rights of others, especially the underrepresented working class. And I believe these difficult and sometimes uncomfortable scripture readings are pointing us to a creator God who knows well the labor and the cost of creation. A God who knows well the cost of trying to bring forth his kingdom to this earth. So let us stand in solidarity with those who labor. Let us always consider the cost. And let us never forget that God's kingdom is near and it is breaking in right now, even as we sit The Nicene Creed found on page 11. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop, for joy in God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community of Udawa, for every city and community and for those who live in them, for all who come here to worship, for our guests and for those who are new to the congregation, for those on our parish family prayer cycle, including Elaine Peters Gannon, Addie and Andrew Gishlog, Judy K. Graham, and for all who live in places of war and terrorism, for all those affected by the unrest in Eastern Europe, for men and women serving in the armed forces, for the School of Theology at the University of the South, Sewanee, for the joy of children and youth, for our ongoing discernment of God's will, and for our parish leadership, including our vestry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Rebecca Dobbs, Denzel Landstreet, Becky McCoy, Gail Reed, Sean Kaiser, for the fourth anniversary of Deacon Josh's ordination, as well as those, as those celebrating wedding anniversaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those on our prayer lists, including Ann Icock, the Burrickman family, Rusty Bird, Jeremy Clark, Russ Cole, Beckett and Lindsay Kordsmeyer, Mike and Chris Cornish, Bill and Vicki Dowley, Bill Dozier, Mark Elliott, Kristen Fenske, Dean and Donna Geise, the Samantha Haynes family, Daniel Hobson, the Roger Hudson family, Canon Beverly Hurley Hill, 
the Loy family, Laura Mays, Betty McCants, Carolyn McCleary, Warren McCleary, Margaret McCullough, Gay Moore, the Moore family, Tams Pemberton, the Powell family, Matthew Pruce, the Reynolds family, Nivea Roberts, the Sniff family, Kristen Sniff, Doug Tullock, Terry Tyrell, Buddy Usmiller, Tyler Walden, Mary Virginia Woods, Allison, Beth, Christine, and family, Penny, and all those impacted by recent rains and flooding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all anger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of all our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Francis and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you declare your glory and show forth your handiwork in the heavens and in the earth. Deliver us in our various occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do the work you give us to do in truth and beauty and for the common good, for the sake of him who came among us as one who serves, your son Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 It is the first Sunday in September. It means it's birthday and anniversary Sunday. We already know it's Deacon Josh's anniversary of his ordination are there other birthdays anniversaries in the house please come forward <laughs> this is great <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. 50? 50. How many, Sandy? How many? 50? 56. Thank you all, and I hope it is a wonderful month for each and every one of you. As, as people are going back to their seat, just a quick reminder, this is the Lord's table. It is not the personal 
possession of any of us. It belongs to the Lord. Therefore, all are welcome to it. In this time of doing things differently, we continue to offer for those who prefer it the mini chalice that contains a small wafer in the top, peel back the foil, and you may have the wafer and then flip it over, peel back the foil, and there's a thimble full of wine. If you prefer, I will have wafers and a little intinction cup. You can have just the wafer or you can have the wafer in, dipped in the wine very quickly if you prefer it that way. If you're not comfortable with any of that, please come forward and receive a blessing. This is the Lord's table, and we want all to be part of this communion service. Now, Deacon Josh and his sermon invited us to look again at Psalm 139. And it is a, it is a wonderful psalm, but particularly he wanted us to focus today on verse 13. And I invite you to read that with me again. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. We continue in the middle of page 14. All things come of you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, 
to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Francis and all your saints, we may enter the heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Post-communion prayer is found at the bottom of page 17. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated for a few brief announcements. Our altar guild this week before I went to St. Mary's Convent collected up our kind of mostly used up candles and I took up thanks to their careful work, two bags of candles to donate to St. Mary's Convent, and they were delighted. And so while I was up there, they took our candles and combined them with candles from St. Mary's on the Highlands in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and made up this inaugural batch of candles. We, we have one of the first batches they made. It's called St. Mary's Lane. And it smells of crab apple and oak, which you have a lot of up at the convent grounds. So uh, I bring this back with their love and their prayers, and I'll have it back by the back door so you can see it. But thank you all for generously sharing of our leftovers with others and know that they are a convent that is a working convent. As you drive up, there's a sign that says, Ora et Labora. And that means pray and work. And so they continue to do many jobs, including keeping the farm at St. Mary's. So thank you for your generosity. We will be off tomorrow, but then it is a full week. Tuesday and Thursday, music lessons in the parish hall. Wednesday evening, we're having to move it up. This week, we moved to 75 sack packs 
for the two schools, for Udawa Elementary and for Snow Hill. These set sack packs enable children to have food over the weekend where they might not have adequate food to get through the weekend. So we need to start packing sooner. We're going to start at 515 starting this Wednesday, packing sack packs. That gives us 45 minutes before worship at 6. At 615, we go into Bible study. This week, we're going to be talking about the Judge Deborah and the General Barak, who combine together. And so it's Judges 4 and 5. And we'd love to have you join us. It's not necessary. You've come to previous Bible studies. Our Bible studies are set up so you can come and join in uh, at any time, and we'd love to see you. So that's Wednesday. And then next weekend, we kick off the Sunday school year for our children and youth. Children will be in the first classroom on the left, youth in the second classroom on the left at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Now, if anyone is still pondering or thinking about being received into the Episcopal Church, being confirmed, there's a youth that wants to get confirmed, uh, we, we have a family that's considering baptism. So any of those things, when the bishop is here October 2nd for St. Francis Day, please let us know and we will have the classes and arrangements to help get people prepared for that. And mark your calendars. 1.30, October 2nd, you want to be up on the hill registering for our annual pet blessing at two o'clock we'll do the parade around the church of the pets and then we'll fill the hill for the blessing with the bishop and then you can spend time at pony rides petting zoo an inflatable maze many booths be careful if you want to adopt a pet there will be adoptable animals here so just know that St. Francis Day, sign up for helping because all hands are appreciated as we welcome the community to our campus is out in the narthex. Also next Sunday, after the 10 o'clock service, you will see next Sunday that we move to using morning prayer as intake communion. That's the part of the service before we get to Holy Communion. We're inviting the training of worship leaders. So if you would like to be a worship leader after the 10 o'clock service, we're going to be training people on how to do that and getting bring your calendars because we'll also sign you up for a Sunday to be a worship leader. <clears throat> I know as many of you as want to learn to do this, we'd love to have you do it. Josh, our deacon, is wonderful and will show us how to do it first next Sunday, and then we can all get together and get more comfortable doing it. On this Sunday for which we give thanks to God for both our labor and our rest, let us remember that Christ has no hands or feet on this earth but our own. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and be generous to give. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.